training. Obviously, I have been strength training throughout. I have definitely kept strength. I think it's really important to keep strength training in there. You obviously don't have to have a goal to improve your strength or, or increase your muscles, but you definitely should have some strength training in your program because this will help you run faster. It helps reduce your risk of injury from your runs. It also just kind of helps with motivation, I find, because it's a different kind of workout. I found I could, I've, I've definitely lost motivation a few times if I've just been running and running and running and running. For me, I have had a goal of improving strength, increasing muscle for the past few months since August last year. And I do still have that goal. Obviously, I realized it's difficult to do this at the same time. The more research I did, it's actually very possible to run and build strength and muscle. It actually is easier to do that than if you are trying to lose weight and you're in an energy or calorie deficit and still run and strength train. That is a lot more difficult. But if you're eating enough, you're fueling yourself, you are actually in a bit of a surplus, then you can definitely run, do lots of cardio and strength train and build muscle and strength. I've been able to do it throughout this. Haven't done it as much as maybe I could have, but I'm also um, just building strength and muscle at a very slow rate. The reason that you can strength train to build muscle and increase your strength and everything while also running is because running improves your aerobic threshold and your endurance. That'll help you in your strength training sessions to actually get more sets and get more reps, be able to increase the weight. It increases your fitness. Endurance training increases your fitness. It allows you to push harder. It allows you to go longer. So why would you not want to do that? If you're trying to build muscle, I think the whole notion, a whole old school thinking of, you know, you can't, you can't do cardio kills your gains and you can't do cardio and strength training. That is so wrong now. And I think a lot of people are realizing that because cardio actually helps improve your fitness. It helps improve your recovery. It helps everything. And you can use cardio. You don't have to do long runs or like you don't have to do a lot of cardio if your primary goal is literally just to build muscle and improve strength you don't have to do a lot of cardio but it can it can help recovery it can help your fitness everything anyway that is a whole nother topic in itself but i have so what i've been doing for my strength training sessions i have gone into them i have still had deload weeks but if i feel very sore from running or anything like that i will decrease the load of my strength training session kind of just do like a mini deload even just like for a day if i feel like it i've gone in very with a very awareness approach of how i'm feeling on the day and that has helped a lot. But also what I have done is I've focused on increasing volume as opposed to the weight. So the reason I've done that is because pure strength training and doing like three sets of like three reps, really heavy weight till to near almost failure, you... That's very neuro neurologically fatiguing. I also took out deadlifts a few weeks ago and I'm feeling so much better. Deadlifts I find are extremely neurologically fatiguing for me and they really impact my back the day after I've done them. And I found that that was just negatively impacting my running. So I took out deadlifts and I changed the notion to kettlebell, kettlebell single leg Romanian deadlifts or something like that. Just a, ver a much less neurologically fatiguing variation of that same movement. What I did overall was increase my volume in the workout and decrease 
the strength side of things so i focused more on hypertrophy kind of training than strength training as well as adding in performance things like lots of uh, broad jumps and slam balls i do that anyway i like to do performance based strength and conditioning but i was definitely doing movements that would help my running a lot of lunges jump lunges all of that stuff and I found that helped having a workout that was more focused on volume with a lower weight and progressing in volume in terms of adding more reps and sets which you can only do for a certain amount of time I would still increase the weight but I wouldn't only increase the weight and decrease the reps I focused a lot more on kind of just increasing my volume which I found helped my recovery a lot because it's a lot easier to recover from that. Another thing that I focused on a lot during this or I have been focusing on a lot is my recovery. I've, I've actually been on a reverse diet since the beginning of this year and I've reached a point where I'm eating a lot more food than I was at the beginning of this year which is helping me a lot I'm eating a lot of protein well protein and enough protein for my body weight and I'm eating a lot of carbs my I'm I have I'm focused more on carbs than fats which helps obviously a lot with, with performance then I've also been doing cold showers and a lot of contrast therapy yeah, I've done a whole lot of nutrition research in terms of even electrolytes, electrolyte balance. Um, when is the best time to have nutrition? Learning what works for your body. What's the best form of nutrition in terms of science? I found a whole bunch of research papers which I can break down in another nutrition strategy video for everyone. But anyway, this was primarily to speak about my training plan and what I've been doing and yeah so I'm about to reach peak week which is very exciting so that'll be the highest weekly volume that I've done and then I will have a two week taper into race day so this yellow is my taper which during a taper you keep the volume no, sorry, oh my god, you keep the intensity, but you decrease the volume. The reason you're keeping the intensity is you because you're wanting to keep those mitochondria functionally optim, optim, functioning optimally during your taper. You don't want them to lose their functionality during the taper. You won't, de you won't lose the amount of mitochondria quickly. So that's, a, that's why it's okay to decrease your total volume by a lot. But you want them to keep functioning optimally. So that is why you keep the intensity sessions. But they don't have to be long at all. Anyway, so I'm very excited. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions or anything, just drop them in the comments below. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you like this content. I will be sharing a lot more just in terms of my daily life as an exercise scientist, as a master's student, as a hybrid athlete, all of my goals in terms of fitness. I want to get more into nutrition, do a video on strength training. I have so many ideas that I want to break down and all scientific and practical based how you can interpret the science and put it into your life practically anyway please comment like and subscribe let me know if you have any questions below and i am so excited for the next one i will see you soon thank you so much for watching bye took off from paradise